Welcome to Celebration Month. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Night John. Night John is a 1996 television release. It is directed by Charles Burnett, cinematography by Elliot Davis, editing by Dorian Harris, music by Stephen James Taylor, and it's written by Bill Kane. Charles Burnett is best known for Killer of Sheep, To Sleep With Anger, My Brother's Wedding, and The Annihilation of Fish. Elliot Davis is best known for Out of Sight, Twilight, Man of Tai Chi, and Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. Dorian Harris is best known for The Outsider, The Man in the High Castle, Bloodline, and Claws. Stephen James Taylor I covered in the video about Around the World with Timon and Pumbaa. The link will be in the description. Bill Kane is best known for Nothing Sacred, House of Cards, Bloodline, and Thicker Than Blood. Night John is based on a book of the same name by Gary Paulson released in 1993. I found a summary, but it really only amounted to six bullet points which I don't think is enough to do the whole comparison thing. So I'm just gonna say it's about a man named John uh, who happens to be a slave and a girl named Sarni who is also a slave. And he teaches her how uh, the alphabet and then how to read. And she loves it, obviously. And in the book, he um, gets his toes cut off for teaching her how to read. And then he escapes and ends up free, but returns at night to continue teaching her. In the movie, um, it seems pretty similar, at least at the core concepts, but some major differences include he gets fingers cut off and not toes, and he doesn't um, escape that particular plantation. He has been, uh, has escaped in the past and found freedom, but came back to teach. Um, he's sold off from that plantation, not escaped. And those are the major differences. The film stars Allison Jones, Carl Lumley, Lorraine Toussaint, and Bo Bridges. Allison Jones plays Sarni and is best known for Ellen Foster in this. Carl Lumley plays John and is best known for Men of Honor, Alias, The Adventures of a Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, and A Cure for Wellness. Lorraine Toussaint plays Dealey and is best known for Hudson Hawk. Selma, Orange is the New Black, and Middle of Nowhere. Bo Bridges plays Clay Waller, and I covered him in the video about Night Crossing, the link will be in the description. It was filmed at Rip Rap's Plantation in Gable, South Carolina, and I was really concerned that this movie was going to be a white savior thing, especially because Bo Bridges was top billing, which means he's listed first, which makes you assume he's the star of the film, and that is not the case. Allison Jones as Sarni is absolutely the star of this movie. Carl Lumley as John followed closely behind her. And it kind of made me mad that they weren't top billing, but top billing can be a huge thing in contracts and all that kind of stuff. So Bo Bridges, even though he wasn't the main character, might've been in his contract that he was the first name listed. It might've been, I don't know. I didn't like it though, because um, there's like four white people in this movie that are like actually main players. And then there's like 15 black people that are main players in this movie, so. It was a little frustrating to see Bo Bridges um, listed first, but it's fine. No, it isn't, but moving on. It was 1996. Sorry, this, I was so worried it was gonna be a white savior movie and there is a tiny little white savior moment at the end, but in the grand scheme of the film, the film is about Sarni and her confidence and independence growing as she learns how to read and gains this knowledge over white people. Uh, more specifically her owners and there's this scene at the end where Bo Bridges' character is holding a gun on Sarni and she's like he won't shoot me and everyone's like yes he will what are you doing and she's like no I'm worth too much to him for him to shoot me he's not gonna shoot something that's $500 to him because he has no money and just um, so everyone knows, um, people aren't property. People of color are not property. Um, holy hell. And for those of you who are like, oh, it was so long ago. No, it wasn't, okay? No, it wasn't, Black Lives Matter, moving on. Sarni turns to her fellow slaves and says, you're worth this much to him, he'll never shoot you. You're worth this much to him, he'll never shoot you. You're worth this much to him, he'll never shoot you. And you can see the power that it's giving them, knowing 
that they're worth too much to him when he has nothing. And it, it changes the whole dynamic, and it's so powerful and amazing of Sarni. And then there's a tiny little white savior moment where this other white dude lies for Sarni. And, like, takes the blame for something, I guess. Um... But in the grand scheme of things, Sarni is the star of the film and you get to go on that journey with her and it's really lovely. I'm just very happy it wasn't a white savior movie and it did paint white people in a terrible light, which is great because slavery was terrible, is terrible. The systemic racism it has made is terrible, so... I was happy to see that the movie wasn't like, oh, but like, look at these poor white people who learned their lesson. No, they were the villains in the movie for sure. I know that there wasn't a big white savior moment in the film and we're happy for that. But I do have to say that Gary Polson, who wrote the novel is a white man and Bill Kane, who adapted the novel is also a white man. Charles Burnett is a black man. So a black man directed the film, which is amazing. That's what we want. We want a black man telling stories about black people. Um, but I can't even begin to tell you how not right it is that a white man wrote a book from the point of view of a young black girl slave. It's just not right. It doesn't sit right. It's not like only black people have the right to tell stories about those experiences because they're their experiences. I just, I know a bunch of y'all are going to get all butthurt and mad at me for standing on the soapbox once again. And I'm sure someone's going to come in and be like, oh, well, it's fiction writing. You can write about anything you want. But, ew, no. So, there you go. Okay. Technically speaking, the film was fine. It's very, you know, it's had pretty good lighting, actually. Um, but, yeah, the... My final rating is six letters out of 10. Our total movie count is parent death toll and cry count are still the same. If you want to keep up with the movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. It is celebration month. This is the first video of August, which means on Wednesday, you're getting the giveaway video. So make sure you tune in on Wednesday for the giveaway video and stay tuned all month for special fun things, especially the week of guests this year. Week of guests is awesome this year. Um, join Patreon, cause also during Celebration Month, Patreon is getting so much bonus content over there. So, oh my goodness, go over to Patreon because uh, lots of bonus content coming during the Celebration Month to make it even special over on Patreon. Until next time, come on, let's it on and try you are, so you do. And uh, don't be racist, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Gary Paul. It was written by a white dude? Okay, I do have to say that for sure then. Right? Because, like, yikes. Ew. Yo, a white dude wrote the book. I just. Mm, my god.